Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Keys to the Kingdom Cracking the Code of Paid Software In the digital age, software has become an essential part of our daily lives. From operating systems to productivity tools, we rely on these programs to perform a multitude of tasks. However, not everyone is willing or able to pay for these software solutions. This is where the world of software piracy comes into play. At the heart of software piracy lies the cracker, a skilled programmer who uses their knowledge to bypass software protections. These individuals possess a deep understanding of software architecture and security mechanisms. They exploit vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the code to gain unauthorized access. They're like digital locksmiths, picking the locks of paid software to make it freely available. This process requires a combination of technical expertise, patience, and creativity. Crackers often work in the shadows, sharing their tools and techniques within underground communities. One common tool in their arsenal is the Keygen, short for Key Generator. Keygens are programs that generate valid license keys for software. These keys trick the software into thinking it has been legitimately purchased, allowing the user to access all features without paying. This clever piece of software generates valid license keys, tricking the paid software into thinking it's been legitimately purchased. The process of creating a key gen involves reverse engineering the software's licensing algorithm, which can be a complex and time-consuming task. It's like having a master key that unlocks every door in a building. With a key gen, users can unlock multiple software programs without ever paying a dime. This not only undermines the software developer's efforts, but also poses significant legal and ethical issues. Another method is patching, where crackers modify the software's code itself. Patching involves altering the executable files to remove or bypass the licensing checks. This method can be more straightforward than creating a keygen, but still requires a deep understanding of the software's inner workings. They find the part of the code that checks for a valid license and simply remove it or alter it to always say yes. This effectively disables the software's protection mechanisms, allowing unrestricted access. Patching can be seen as a digital form of vandalism, where the original code is defaced to serve the cracker's purpose. Imagine taking a pair of scissors to a book and cutting out the pages you don't want to read. In the same way, crackers cut out the parts of the software they don't want, leaving behind a version that operates without restrictions. This practice not only deprives developers of their rightful earnings, but also raises questions about the integrity and security of the modified software. Patchwork pirates sowing chaos into secure systems. While keygens and patching might sound straightforward, they often involve a deep understanding of the software's inner workings. Crackers spend hours, even days, analyzing code, looking for vulnerabilities to exploit. They're like digital detectives, searching for clues and piecing together puzzles. But instead of solving crimes, they're finding ways to break into digital fortresses. Their motivations vary. Some crackers do it for the challenge, the thrill of outsmarting sophisticated security measures. Others believe that software should be free for everyone. Mirroring Masterminds Reverse Engineering the Digital World Reverse engineering is perhaps the most complex method of cracking. It's like taking apart a car engine to understand how it works, then building a replica from scratch. Crackers who engage in reverse engineering delve deep into the software's binary code, the language of computers. They painstakingly translate it into a more understandable form, uncovering the secrets of its design. This process requires immense skill and patience, but it allows crackers to understand the software inside and out. With this knowledge, they can then create cracks that are much harder to detect and block. Section 5. Why They Hack the motivations behind the mouse clicks. The motivations behind software cracking are as diverse as the crackers themselves. Each individual has a unique story, a personal reason that drives them to bypass security measures and access restricted software. Some are driven by ideology, believing that information should be free and accessible to all. These individuals see themselves as digital activists, fighting against what they perceive as unjust restrictions on information. They argue that knowledge should not be confined by paywalls or corporate interests. Others are motivated by profit, selling cracked software online or bundling it with malware for financial gain. These hackers see an opportunity to make money by exploiting the demand for free or cheaper software. 
They often operate in dark corners of the internet, where anonymity is their shield. These black hat hackers operate in the shadows, their actions often causing significant harm. They are the ones who create and distribute malicious software, leading to data breaches, financial losses, and compromised personal information. Their activities are illegal and can have serious consequences for both individuals and organizations. And then there are those who crack software simply for the challenge, the intellectual pursuit of understanding and circumventing security measures. These individuals are often highly skilled and see hacking as a way to test their abilities. For them, it's not about the money or the ideology, but the thrill of solving a complex puzzle. These gray hat hackers often walk a fine line between ethical and unethical behavior. They may exploit vulnerabilities to expose security flaws, sometimes informing the affected parties, other times not. Their actions can be controversial as they operate in a legal gray area balancing their own moral compass with the potential impact of their actions. Section 6, The Game of Cat and Mouse, A History of Hacks The battle between software creators and crackers is a constant game of cat and mouse. As soon as a new security measure is implemented, crackers are already working to find a way around it. Over the years, we've seen some high-profile software hacks, from early video game cracks to sophisticated attacks on operating systems and financial software. These events highlight the constant evolution of cracking techniques and the ongoing need for robust cybersecurity measures. Section 7. The High Cost of Free Risks of Using Cracked Software While the allure of free software can be tempting, using cracked software carries significant risks. One of the biggest dangers is malware. Crackers often bundle malware with cracked software, turning unsuspecting users into victims of identity theft, financial fraud, or even ransomware attacks. Moreover, cracked software can be unstable and prone to crashes, leading to data loss and system instability. And without access to updates and security patches, users of cracked software are left vulnerable to new threats. Section 8. Protecting the Digital Realm Cybersecurity's Vital Role In an increasingly digital world, cybersecurity is paramount. Software developers are constantly working to strengthen their defenses, implementing sophisticated encryption, authentication, and anti-tampering measures. Antivirus software, firewalls, and regular software updates are crucial for protecting against malware and other threats. But cybersecurity is not just the responsibility of software developers. Users play a vital role in protecting themselves by practicing safe computing habits, such as using strong passwords, being wary of suspicious links, and avoiding cracked software. Section 9. Ethics in the Digital Age. Choosing the Right Path. The world of software cracking raises important ethical questions. While some argue that software should be free, it's crucial to recognize the hard work and creativity that go into its development. Just as we wouldn't steal physical goods, we have a moral obligation to respect intellectual property rights in the digital realm. By choosing to purchase legitimate software, we support the creators and foster a culture of innovation. In the end, the choice is ours, to embrace ethical practices or to support a system that undermines creativity and progress.